Today I am grooming Hagrid, the eight-year-old Newfoundland dog. Hi Hagrid, it's nice to see you again. Okay buddy, yep, let's get a groom. You stink, so we're starting with Nasty Critter. The last time I did Hagrid, he was a really good boy. So hopefully he is yet again a really good boy, right? Yeah. So last time you were here, you were seven. So you must be either eight or close to eight at this point. Let's do this. And you're already shaking. Cool. So to answer a question that I get all the time, and I have already answered this question, but not everyone sees all of my videos. So I get a lot of the same questions over and over again, even though they've been answered. So I will answer this question. This question is mostly for pet groomers because they tend to ask me a lot why I don't pre-blast the coat first. And pre-blasting the coat is just taking the high velocity dryer to the dry, dirty dog before the bath because it helps to loosen up matting, it helps to remove shedding undercoat and makes bathing easier and quicker. And it is a great method. I've used it in the past, but I don't like using it because dander, dirt, gets all over my shop. It gets all over me. It gets all over my equipment. It takes a long time to clean up. I find it very gross. I don't like breathing it in. So although it is a great method, I don't like the outcome of that method when it comes to the cleanup process and how coated everything gets in dander and dirt. The reality is, yes, it would make bathing easier and quicker, but that time that I'm saving, I will end up spending cleaning the shop after anyways. So I don't really see it as much of a time saver because I end up having to scrub every inch of my shop and my equipment at the end of the groom. If you bathe the dog first, you remove a ton of their dander and obviously all of their dirt. And then when you blow dry them, you do not have that same outcome as if you pre-blast them. So it's just not what I prefer to do. Every groomer has their own method of doing things. I completely respect doing that. I think it is a great method, a great tool. If you like doing it, awesome. It's just not something I like doing. It doesn't mean that I don't think that it's a good method or that I'm unwilling to do something different. I have done it. I don't like it. That's all there is to it. On to the next canister, of course. This dog is well maintained. He doesn't have a ton of shedding undercoat. Obviously he stinks, but he's usually in really good shape. Nope, nope, nope. Thank you. Shake when I leave the area, please. Hagrid comes to me all the way from Ohio, so that is quite the trip to make for a grooming appointment. This is the second time I've done him. You guys might remember him from my main channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, there are two separate channels, Girl with the Dogs and Girl with the Dogs 2. Girl with the Dogs shows short form videos about two to five minutes long, heavily edited with a voiceover. Girl with the Dogs 2 shows this kind of content, which is not as edited. There is no voiceover, and it is a more in-depth, step-by-step grooming process for you guys to watch. If you are watching from Facebook, this does not apply to you. This only applies to those who watch from YouTube. So, don't forget to subscribe to both channels, Girl with the Dogs, oh, and Girl with the Dogs 2, if you are watching from YouTube. You're dirty today. I'm gonna assume that that's because of the ridiculously warm winter that we're having. And there's just mud everywhere and everybody's dogs are just covered in mud. Okay, we're gonna turn to the other side again because I've gotta use de-shedding now. 
That's another thing that this winter has done is caused everybody's dogs to continuously shed because it's like their coats are confused as to what is going on with this strange warm weather. Look at that drool. All right, buddy, Let's scrub this in. You have such a silky, shiny coat. You're gonna shake, because you're a big shaker. It smells so much better now. Shake it off. That's nice. Good boy, stay. No shaking yet. Got a lot of rinsing to do on this face. You're a good boy. So, Hagrid here, I believe, is eight. And eight years old is old for a Newfoundland. I think that he is in great shape. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that he is doing so well, even at eight years old. First and foremost is going to be breeding. I do believe that he got this dog from a registered quality breeder. He has good bloodlines, good health. So that's gonna be number one. Number two is gonna be weight. He is lean for a Newfoundland and he's probably been lean his whole life, which is going to help him with his hips and joints. He should be sitting. Newfoundlands generally sit, especially at eight years old when you're working on them because standing is just too hard on them. And he's not sitting at all and I'm not forcing him to stand, which tells me that his hips and joints are in really good condition. I'm gonna say that diet's also playing a role. So all of these things to take into consideration is probably why he is thriving even at eight years old. All right, now it's time for conditioner. I've also had a lot of questions about conditioner, people saying I don't normally put conditioner on pets and why not? That's actually not true. I put conditioner on all of my pets, I just sometimes take it out of the video just because it's the exact same thing over and over again as the shampoo and the rinse. So it just becomes a little bit repetitive, so oftentimes I take it out. But yes, I condition every dog. I don't condition every cat, and that's because sometimes cats panic when they're being bathed, so I just want the bath to be over as quickly as possible. So if they're panicking, then they don't get conditioner. You're a good boy, Hagrid. Are you an angel? Okay, final rinse. Final rinse and then it's off to the dryer. Okay, buddy. I've given you multiple towel dries, although you're still dripping. That is just some ice on ice, which is similar to the stuff for dogs. It's a conditioning and quick drying formula. All right, and do you like to wear the happy hoodie? Ugh. He is actually not that big for Newfoundland. Okay, let's do this.
Stand up because you're sliding. Good boy. So the last time I did him, I left him with short ears. The owner doesn't have a preference, so this time I'm gonna leave him with long ears so he looks more like the noof. Under here though, I'm gonna trim all of this up because it is very, very greasy. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like because the ear will lay on top of it. So you won't even see it gonna take the 10 blade and shave some of this greasiness. He seems to have some weakness happening from all of the standing so I'm gonna try to do as much as I can with him standing and I might have to finish him on the ground. I'm just going through his back end with my dematter because he does have a little bit of matting back here and then I'm going to brush him out. So far, it has taken me about an hour and a half to bathe and dry him. So that's very quick for Newfoundland. Stay. And it's because he stands and it's because his coat is in good condition. That's the reason why he doesn't take me as long as most. And he is not as big as a lot of the ones that I have groomed. I got pretty much all of his shedding coat out with the dryer. He's not shedding that much right now. I love that his coat is in such good shape. It makes my job a lot easier. And his, because it's not comfortable when you're brushing out a matted coat so it's nice when it's not matted this I'm not gonna brush out because I'm gonna chop it off I get a lot of questions why I do so many de shed dogs why I don't do a lot of scissor work and stuff like that and I'll answer all of that for you so in regards to why I don't do a lot of scissor work um, I'm not the best at it I'll be honest so it's important to remember when watching my channel that I am a pet groomer. I am not a show groomer. I'm not here to try to educate people on how to do the best type of scissor work or sculpting work on dogs or cats. I am simply the groomer that makes your pet clean, tidy, and gets rid of any matting. I also really like working on pets with behavioral issues which I do a lot and obviously when working on pets with behavioral issues it's not important really what they look like at the end it's more important that you just get the groom done safely and as quickly as possible without causing as much stress as you can so that is the reason why you don't see me do quite a bit of scissor work on pets and when it comes to the big d shed dogs I prefer their natural look over being nice and tidied with scissors that's the truth i can tidy them up really well with scissors but mostly the owners like their natural look so unless they ask for it it's not something i typically do even on my own pomeranian sometimes i have to tidy her up with scissors because of the weather and it just starts her long hair starts to just collect everything 
but I like the look of her when she's a big fluffy mess. Right? Okay, this side is brushed out. Let's brush out the other side. And then I think I'm gonna try to put him on the ground and let him lay down for his paws because I can tell that he's very tired. And I think if I try to lift his paws to work on them, he is gonna have some difficulty standing. So hopefully he just lays down for me so I can do his paws. Tidy up those back feet while you're still standing. Nope, you gotta stay. So all that's left is nails and paws. I'm gonna put him down on the ground, see if I can get him to lay down for that. And then I will tidy up his nails and paws just because I can tell that he is starting to have a little bit of a difficult time standing and it might be easier for him to do it laying down. Oh, you stay there, you little sploot. Stay there. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Shaky, shaky. Hey. Okay, now I need you to really roll over so I can do these ones. And unless you roll over, I won't be able to do them. So roll over. Oh, what a good boy. If somebody saw these paw prints in the snow, they would literally think that it was a bear. Like his paws are huge. Good boy. You have slobber all over you. No, 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 hey, 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 no, no, no. I had one paw left. One. Excuse me. I need to do the last one. Stay. Hey, excuse me. Fine. Just stay like that. You know what's funny is that this, these nails on this paw were the only nails that were very short. And I swear he knew that. And that's why he's like, um, you don't need to trim these nails. Thank you. I'm good. Okay, so Hagrid is all finished. In total, he took me two hours and 20 minutes to complete. Normally, I let the dogs outside to run around and play so you can see how nice their groom is. But it has been nonstop raining here for over a week and my backyard is a complete mud pit. It is flooded. So my clean dogs will not be allowed to go back there. Thank you guys so much for watching yet again and I will see you again in a few days.